My favorite gourd used to be loofah because of course you can make your own natural sponges. Then I tried bottle gourd or birdhouse gourd and didn't realize just how much fun they are and how much support they need. Two plants produced over 20 gourds and my makeshift trellis started to fall over. Surprisingly, I grew them in straw bales and direct seeded in spring. Because we're in southeastern United States, we have a long enough growing season to direct seed. I planted them at the edges of the row of bales and in the middle I grew cucumbers. Gourds are technically a fruit that require a long growing season, so be prepared for 75 to 110 days and then you need to wait to harvest. So let's say five months, more like six months, 180 days until you really take them inside. If you live in a colder climate, just start them inside six to eight weeks before the last frost date. It wasn't long before the dog was using it as his shady lookout spot, a living dog house with lots of ventilation and trendy lighting. I did worry that one would fall and bonk buck on the head. I'm creating another house for him with gourds for another video. It is really important to wait. Wait until the stems turn brown before cutting the gourds down to dry. Also have a good length of stem so that the moisture and disease can't find its way inside. I kept a fan on them in the garage and they dried pretty well. Some rotted and that's to be expected. You can scrape off any mold that appears to try to keep them disease free. If they get softer and not drier, they're probably destined for the compost. Know too that mice and squirrels will want to get into the inside for the seeds, hence the hole in that one. Did you know that Mayans would fill gourds with wasps and throw them at their attackers? This made me think, so I designed a little original cartoon about how that might apply in my modern day. Just kidding. This year rolls around and I decide to get a couple steel fence hog panels, 16 feet long by a little over 3 feet wide. I curved them in between my raised beds and planted the gourd seeds on the east side on the left here. It, in no time, the panels were being painted with leaves and eventually pretty white blooms. The vines stretched relentlessly and I had to go out there several times to trim them back because they pull all the plants in all directions with their tendril action. Before I even saw a gourd, I saw a monarch chrysalis and it only took one day after that before the butterfly emerged. I went in the house for a bit and it was gone. I didn't know that butterflies can remember things from when they were caterpillars. There are so many fascinating aspects of the process of pupating, like how they turned a liquid inside the casing, which is actually their own skin. They rearrange their cells inside. More on that in another video. Finally, from the female flowers, a small swollen area will develop into a gourd if pollinated. I have no shortage of pollinators in this chemical-free garden. Still, there were a few that rotted before they could, get to, they could get to the point where they're viable. After about a month after seeing some develop, there was some real progress. Not all the same shape and size. Really heavy though, especially if you knock up against one with your head trying to capture some cool pictures. I especially like the extra long ones with a ball at the end and hope those survive so I can make long ladles. Will I need to stand on a ladder to spoon out some soup from my cauldron? These are long handled dipper gourds. They should become about two to four feet long. They're pale green gourds with a bulbed end perfect for making ladles, dippers, bowls, jugs, utensils, birdhouses, musical instruments, and other arts and crafts. I'm sure the neighbors think I'm the equivalent of the cat lady, but garden style, yes, yes, I am. But I can do without the cats coming over to spray and the cute rabbits eating my beans. I learned maybe keep the next tunnel separate from my other crops, but what I have is a chaotic garden where gourd vines are twirled around asparagus ferns and almost makes support for my tomato plant, which is about eight feet wide and 10 feet tall. A good tip when growing gourds in a tunnel is to remove browning yellow leaves and a few others to open up the tunnel so you can get good airflow. You don't want gourds to rot and you don't want foliage to rot all around you. I make sure to pick up the leaves and put them in my forest compost pile.
I think the Smithsonian has on display a crude telephone made by American Indians 1,200 years ago. This cutie is only 17 years old and is crude occasionally. Running in the sand, living on the land. The salty breeze was in our eyes. We stood beneath the dragonflies and danced. 